Beth, and I may have gotten too many books this spring. I am excited to talk about all of the books that I've accumulated during the spring of this year. It's a full shelf and we're almost to the end of May. So I have had some other books that I picked up and read. Book of the Month picks, The Adventures of Amina al Sarafi. There are books that I just didn't love and I have already donated them and so they are not taking up space on my shelf anymore. I didn't include any of the books that appeared on my April wrap up. My initial thought was that if I've already reviewed it in my April wrap up, it's probably not going to appear in my book haul because it's read, it's done, it might even be gone at that point. Without further ado, here is a very large spring book haul. Let's kick things off with my book of the month pick for the month of May, and that is The Collected Regrets of Clover by Nikki Brammer. My book of the month pick for April was a pretty big disappointment, and so for this month I made sure to do diligence 
to read not only the summary of the book on the Book of the Month app, but also got a glimpse at the first chapter of the book to make sure that I was still interested in picking it up. Uh, and so this is the one that I chose. It opens with a story of a body in the library, not that kind of body in the library. The person who dies is a children's librarian and the witness to the death is a little girl during story time. What would be a traumatic event for literally any other child becomes an indelible moment for our main character who decides to take the career path of becoming a death doula. As she accompanies dying people in their last moments, our main character is used to giving them comfort and listening to their final regrets. She hasn't really done anything that could be considered a bucket list item or accumulated her own list of regrets. So in this story, I think Clover is going to be persuaded to take some risks and build some regrets of her own. Before we move too far along, I wanted to give you some closure and show you the books that I found when I was at Loganberry Books the other week. So the two books that I picked up at Loganberry Books were The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin and Ernest Hemingway's For Whom the Bell Tolls. Went into the store looking for a copy of this because I am excited to read it this summer. I want to get into the Broken Earth trilogy. Completely thanks to BookTube, I have no shortage of fantasy and sci-fi series that I want to pick up. And the Broken Earth trilogy is one of the ones that I'm most excited to get to this summer. Later in the month, when I stopped by Half Price Books, I also found so now I have books one and two. It's a dystopian sci-fi with elements of environmental magic. We've got themes of climate change and a mother fighting against a broken earth to reclaim her daughter. That's really all I know going into it and that's okay. I'm excited to pick it up. So I think we have to pause for a moment and give an applause for this terrible cover for Whom the Bell Tolls. I really dislike pretty much everything about this cover. Let me know if you disagree, it's totally fine. Design is subjective and it's going to mean different things to different people, but I think just the, the interesting choice of colors that you wouldn't see. I mean, I would be terrified if I saw these colors in the sky, wouldn't you? <laughs> and then we have the snow in the foreground. It's definitely feeling 60s, 70s to me. I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm off. This book was just six dollars. It was like five ninety nine, but it's got like oh, it's got that old book smell, and the inside looks nice. It's not on my like hype summer TBR choices. Maybe I'll read it when the landscape looks more like this. So the next book I want to talk about is a nonfiction, and it arrived just a little bit too late to be read for Mother's Day. That is Mothership by Francesca Segal. In this memoir, the author shares about her time waiting in the mothership, um, which is their name for the NICU, the neonatal intensive care unit of the hospital, when her twin girls are born 10 weeks prematurely. All of her dreams of what new parenthood would look like are put on hold. The blurb on the back says, as each day brings a fresh challenge for her and her babies, Francesca makes a temporary life among a band of mothers who are vivid, fearless, and inspiring taking care not only of their children, but of one another. I've heard that this book is a celebration of female friendship in troubling times. It's a tender and gripping page turner, and I can't wait to pick it up. The next two books I picked up are for the Game of Tomes read-along in May and June, and those are The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky and The Stranger by Albert Camus. This is hefty. This is a hefty chunk alert. This is going to be my second time reading The Brothers Karamazov, but the first time through I was reading the David Macduff translation, which is your standard Penguin Black Spine edition. And this time around, I decided to pick up the translation that is by Richard Pevier and Larissa Volokonsky. In this Russian classic, we are following three brothers who couldn't be more different. There's the dull and impulsive Dmitri, the cold and exacting Ivan, and the rosy-cheeked philosopher Alyosha. This story has elements of courtroom drama, there's a murder mystery, and family drama, but that shouldn't be surprising. This is the first Russian classic that I have ever read, so the fact that I'm going back to it before I progress forward to the ones that I'm looking forward to a little more, like Anna Karenina and War and Peace, is interesting, but I am doing it for the Game of Tomes because I really have enjoyed 
reading the books and hearing the thoughts from the other people who are reading the books and then hearing Emmy and Carolyn talk about it after the fact. So yeah, so I'm in it and I got it and I'm I'm going to be reading it again. I have not, however, read The Stranger. I am going into this blind. I know nothing about it. But when I was picking it up at Barnes & Noble, I had the amazing experience of the cashier ringing it up and telling me, this is one of my favorite books. Honestly surprised me that it would be someone's favorite. Color me intrigued. Another classic that the same cashier rang up for me is Franny and Zoe by J.D. Salinger. I loved The Catcher in the Rye. If you didn't get to check out my April wrap-up video, make sure you give that a watch because you'll get a little bit more of my thoughts on that particular book. Something I learned in the process of acquiring this one, if you want to get a copy of any of J.D. Salinger's books, you really should check out the Pango Books app because there are so many really nice condition used copies of his books that you can get from people because they're studying his work in college or high school um, and a lot of people don't want to keep theirs. I have a little bit of a regret that, you know, I expected that I was getting a nicer copy at the bookstore and that's just not the case. You can find dozens of these literally dozens of these on Pango Books, I'm sure Thrift Books also. And if you got it on Thrift Books, it wouldn't even matter if it was a different cover for you. So there you go. I have, I have learned, I have collected a regret. For this one, I wanted to read a quote that features in the description. Everything everybody does is so, I don't know, not wrong or even mean or even stupid necessarily, but just so tiny and meaningless sad making. And the worst part is, if you go bohemian or something crazy like that, you're just conforming just as much, only in a different way. <laughs> so good. This is apparently two stories together in one volume, and so we have Franny and then we have Zoe, and I don't know if they tie together thematically or literally if their stories are interwoven, so I'm looking forward to reading this one. And it's very tiny, uh, just like Catcher in the Rye. It's Jess could easily put in his pocket. I am looking forward to giving this one a read. Early this month, I picked up my first Juliette Merlier book, and that was Dreamer's Pool. It has been sitting on my shelf for a good year, and I have not read it, and I just decided I was in the mood for a fantasy, and I wanted it to be a little just a little chunk. So I grabbed this one and I have no regrets. I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. I liked it enough to get the next two books in the trilogy. So yeah. I'll be sharing my full thoughts on Dreamer's Pool and my May wrap up. These books are the perfect size for reading in bed. If you drop one on your face because you're falling asleep too early, it's not going to leave a mark. <laughs> But don't quote me on that. Don't, don't, don't sue me. Don't be litigious like that. No, don't do that. The next book falls under the category of books I bought on a whim last month. I saw someone I knew was reading it and I was curious. And so I got Fantasties, a fairy romance by George MacDonald. And it is a very shiny cover. It's the shiniest. This book, much like its author, was a rich inspiration for many writers, including Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, Madeline L'Engle, G.K. Chesterton. George MacDonald had a very short career in ministry. He was actually dismissed from his position for his unorthodox beliefs, and so he turned to writing fiction to make a living. He seemed to be one of those writers that initially put others off but then won them over by his warm personality. And that included the writer Mark Twain. Other than some solid allegory, I really have no idea what I'm getting into with this one. Because in addition to some of the strangest cover designs I've ever seen, the title really doesn't give me anything. I'm honestly both scared and excited to read this one. I added these next two books to my list after watching a video by Britta Bowler. Her channel name is The Second Shelf. The first one is Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. 
This gothic mystery story is led by a young female detective who's confronted with her most baffling case ever, the kidnapping of a child who is rumored to have supernatural powers. The child's talents have captured some unwanted attention in the form of collectors who deal in strange and wonderful things. We follow our main character, Britty, through the maze of smoke-filled Victorian London, and along the way she's helped by a cast of side characters that include a seven-foot-tall housemaid, a sad, tattoo-covered ghost, and an apothecary with a personality like a fun uncle. But secrets abound in this foggy underworld where spectacle is king and nothing is what it seems. It's a mystery, it's set in Victorian London, and it sounds weird. What more could you ask for? The other one that I picked up thanks to Britta is The Illumination of Ursula Flight, and this is by Anne-Marie Crowhurst. Our main character, Ursula Flight, arrives on Earth at the same time as an ill-auguring comet. She's born at the same time Oliver Cromwell dies, and the restoration of King Charles II is soon to follow. Ursula's father decides to give her the benefit of something that was not common for women of that time, and that is an education. As Ursula learns, she develops a special interest in reading, writing, and astrology. When Ursula has her first encounter with someone from the world of theater, she's starstruck and sets off on a quest to become a playwright. Along the way, she'll encounter scoundrels, fortune seekers, bad luck, and heartbreak. This promises to be a humorous historical fiction with strong feminist themes. I picked it up not really knowing a lot about the story, but from Britta's review that we have a strong female protagonist who dreams of being a playwright whilst living in a time when truly all of the world is a stage set and ready to be changed by the political events that will impact the trajectory of her life and those of the entire commonwealth. As an added bonus, I learned that this book is mixed media. Amidst the narrative, we're given sketches of plays, letters, lists, and notes. Let me know in the comments if you, like me, appreciate a good mixed media novel. One book that I have pre-ordered for months has finally arrived and I hope I'm not alone in my age group for saying that this is one of my most anticipated reads of this year and that is The Making of Another Motion Picture Masterpiece by the one, the only, Tom Hanks. This book is labeled as a literary and historical fiction. It's a story that traverses from a soldier coming home from World War II and progresses to 1970 when his nephew, a graphic artist decides to make a comic book. We then jump to present day where a successful Hollywood director is adapting that comic book into, you guessed it, a major motion picture. In addition to the main storyline, this book has some special elements too in the form of the comic books that the movie will be based on. I'm so excited to read this one. It's probably going to be on my May TBR. I'm expecting a sly behind the scenes look at the book to film adaptation process, as well as just humor and some heartwarming generational storytelling. This next one has similar vibes to me. Maybe it's just the Americana aspect of it, but it's Travels with Charlie in Search of America by John Steinbeck. Although I don't think I would consider John Steinbeck to be one of my favorite authors, there's just something very unique that I feel when I'm reading his books. It always reminds me of the shared hardship of life, living in the grit of uncertain times in history, and the community that can be found when you're suffering through similar circumstances. That's the feeling I got when reading his war correspondence in Once There Was a War, and it's a similar feeling that I have gotten from reading The Grapes of Wrath and East of Eden. I'm getting some serious summer road trip vibes from this one, and so it's probably going to make it onto my June or July TBR. If you, like me, enjoy books about writers, libraries, the publishing industry, and bookstores, hardcore book nerd books, Lena Norms just made a video. I'll link it in the description if you're interested. This book falls into that category because it is The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zefon. The blurb for this one says Barcelona 1945. A city slowly heals from its war wounds, and Daniel, an antiquarian book dealer's son who mourns the loss of his mother, finds solace in a mysterious book entitled The Shadow of the Wind by one Julian Carax. Carax? But when he sets out to find the author's other works, he makes a shocking discovery. Someone has been systematically destroying every copy of every book Carax has ever written. In fact, Daniel may have the last of Carax's books in existence. Soon, Daniel's seemingly innocent quest opens a door into Barcelona's darkest secrets. 
an epic story of murder, madness, and doomed love. It's a book in a book. Bookception, hashtag bookception. Does that exist? Don't worry, I'll get to it. You know how there are certain books that you can pretty much guarantee are going to be on the shelf at a used bookstore? Like if you were playing bookstore bingo, bookstore bingo, that's a good idea. Pachinko by Min J. Lee. This is a hefty one primarily because we're following three generations in a Korean family. The description says, richly told and profoundly moving, Pachinko is a story of love, sacrifice, ambition, and loyalty. From the bustling street markets to the halls of Japan's finest universities to the pachinko parlors of the criminal underworld, Lee's complex and passionate characters, strong, stubborn women, devoted sisters and sons, fathers shaken by moral crisis, survive and thrive against the indifferent arc of history. I feel like I'm pretty picky when it comes to historical fiction, but the opinions on this one seem pretty split, so let me know what you thought. No spoilers, please. This one's running from close second for worst cover that I have acquired over the spring. The design style is not quite what we're looking for. The nice thing about it is that under the dust jacket, there is a pretty nice printing on the hardback itself, so I'm going to show you both. Um, this book is a Father Brown omnibus, and that is a collection of murder mystery stories from G.K. Chesterton. I have read a collection of Father Brown mysteries, so I know that I like them. This book was only a dollar. It was a dollar. So it's okay if it's not the most pretty thing you've ever seen. I can still appreciate aspects of the historicalness of the design. This is very 1930s right here. It's a book club edition, so if you're wondering what your book of the month books are gonna look like in like 50, 60 years from now, this is, this is it. <laughs> this is the actual hardcover itself. This is pretty much close, or it could be my favorite color, blue, green. It's like a it's almost teal, but it's got a little bit more minty green in it. But yeah, it's just, it's very nice underneath the dust jacket. However, the dust jacket does have, um, you know, like the description of the collection. And then on the back, it says what they say about Father Brown. And there at the very top is a blurb from Agatha Christie. So that's pretty cool. I know some of you are saying like, I like it. I think it's cool. That's awesome. I think it's cool enough that I wanted to grab it, but it's not a design style that I gravitate toward. I picked up, I did want to read more from Ishiguro, and so I picked up the other two that I'm very interested in, The Buried Giant and The Remains of the Day. I know that this one has like some Downton Abbey vibes. We're following a butler who is working for a gentleman who might not be the most respectable in reality, but he really does care for him and his needs. So he kind of sees him in a different light. I was slightly spoiled for this one when I read a book that I'll be talking to you about in my May wrap up because one of the books that they read in their book club was The Remains of the Day. This next one, all I know is that there is a couple at the center of the story and they're living in a place where everyone loses their memory. I don't know if it's at the end of each day or if it's um, even more frequent than that, but there is like this idea of memory loss there is themes of love and marriage. That's really all I know. I'm excited about this one, but I'm not sure when I want to read this. The cover is giving me winter vibes. So let me know if you guys think I should save this for winter time because winter is like crazy long in Ohio. So I will definitely have time to read it. This next book I have seen around booktube for a while and it's kind of circling back. You know how sometimes you look in the library catalog to see if they have a copy of a book and the copy is just so strange you just you just really don't you don't want to read from that one you're going to be carrying around a book that doesn't look like that that was what happened for this one i've heard really good things about this most of the readers that i've seen have read this one have kept it and wanted to reread it so that's cool it's giving me vibes of the adventures of Kimmy trapped underground and then she like walks up out of the ground. I can't remember the name of it. 
I will show an image. That's all I thought about when I've heard the descriptions of this book. I know it's much more serious, it's more dark and emotional, but I'm, I'm eager to read it and it might make my summer TBR. We'll see. The next one is a pirate book and I am feeling like some pirate books for summer this year, so I will most likely read this one and that is Daphne du Maurier's Frenchman's Creek. I don't know anything about this classic, I just know that there are pirates and that is the life for me right now. I want to read more seafaring stories over the summertime, it just seems like a perfect fit. As I may have mentioned before, there are no shortage of fantasy series that I've been wanting to pick up lately and one of those that is still fairly short and manageable in my mind is The Ember Blade by Chris Wooding. This one purports to be a sort of retelling of The Lord of the Rings. We have a quest, we have a central character or two, and then some side characters that aid them on their journey. I don't really know much else about it. I'm looking forward to reading it. This one has some summery vibes to it, so it could be a summer TBR pick. We'll see. Because this one currently only has this book and then book two, it is a little bit more approachable as a series. I tend to not like to watch TV series that are not wrapped up yet or to start fantasy book series that are not wrapped up yet because I really don't like that feeling of hanging in there until the final installment is released and thankfully I haven't gotten into anything that isn't concluded that is grossly long. I'm looking at you, Name of the Wind and Red Rising. This one seems approachable because it is only two books so far and I'm looking forward to getting into it. One more first of a fantasy series that I might be starting and that is Malice by John Gwynn. I have heard great things about this. I expect it to be epic. I expect some pretty detailed battle scenes and myth system, but it is a nice big floppy one. The other books in the series are also about this size, so it seems like a good amount of time to spend with our characters and the world building, and I think it'll be fun to pick up. The next one is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. I really love this cover. I have seen the other ones. This is a UK edition paperback. Um, got it from Blackwell's. Blurb on the back says, Enchantments run deep on the magical Isle of Cadence. There's gossip carried by the wind, plaid shawls can be as strong as armor, and the smallest cut of a knife instills fathomless fear. The land's capricious spirits find mirth in the lives of its inhabitants, but that mischief turns malevolent as girls begin to go missing. Adira, heiress of the East, knows there's only one bard capable of drawing the spirits forth by song, her childhood enemy, Jack Tamerlane. As Jack and Adira reluctantly work together, it becomes apparent the trouble with the spirits is far more sinister than they thought, and older, darker secret lurks, threatening to undo them all. I believe it's a duology, so we have a river enchanted and then a fire endless. I have noticed so many books by this author that are interesting to me, but I thought that this would be a good place to start, so let me know what you thought if you have read this one, or if you're excited to pick it up soon. The final book in my haul is The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali, and I found this lovely little used copy um, at a bookshop that I regularly bring used books to and because of that I get store credit for used books so this was 50% off which I think is a pretty good deal for this beautiful edition. The only thing that's a downside to me is the deckled edges. Those are just not my favorite. Let me know if, if you like them or if you like me dislike them but it also has some French flaps so we can forgive a few things, I guess. In this story, we're following two people that meet in a stationary shop in Tehran. Their connection and their relationship is facilitated by the shop owner. I'm going into this one expecting a sad love story where there is a lot of time in between their meeting and then they're eventually finding one another again. I know that they're going to be torn apart by war and society and I'm excited to read the full story for myself. You can see that the shelf behind me is finally completely empty. Just a reminder that 
however many books you pick up, however many books you read. If you read one book a year, if you read 10 books a year, if you're enjoying what you're reading, that's what counts. Let me know in the comments if you've read or if you're interested in picking up any of the books that I talked about. Also, when this video is live, it's going to be right smack in the middle of a long Memorial Day weekend here in the United States. I wanna hear what books are getting lost in over the long weekend. And if you watched this far, but you're not really sure what to comment, go ahead and comment with a stack of books emoji because we went through a lot of them together, guys. Make sure you subscribe for easy notifications when my next video goes live and hit that like button if you'd like to support my channel. Thanks for joining me for this fun spring book haul and I will see you in another video soon.